So late last week, former Minneapolis police officer Kim Potter was found guilty of first and second degree manslaughter. She shot and killed 20 year old Dante Wright during a chaotic traffic stop when she grabbed her gun instead of her taser. Here's what Wright's parents said about the conviction. At this point, do you forgive her? Never. Never. I, will, I could never forgive that woman because um, she took my son away from me. When I look at her, I, I see the person that my son last seen before he took his last breaths. Wow. So let's get right to our expert. So to talk more about this guilty verdict, we are joined by former prosecutor and defense attorney Mari Henderson. Thank you for joining us, Mari. Now, I'm curious to know, in your opinion, was this a fair verdict? It was a fair verdict based on the evidence that was pre presented, especially the body camera footage in this case. But I would have been equally unsurprised had the trial resulted in a hung jury because the jury was deadlocked. They deliberated for four days for 27 hours. And the two counts of first and second degree manslaughter are very confusing. The standards of recklessness and culpable negligence in trying to parse out whether this was an honest mistake, as the defense argued, or something that rose to the level of a crime. Wow. Um, listen, it doesn't seem like that the parents feel like that they got justice. I know they got some sort of legal justice, but what evidence do you think specifically swayed the jury? Well, I think the evidence that specifically swayed the jury was not necessarily the body camera footage. That was more helpful to the defense because that showed that it truly was a mistake that Kim Cotter recognized immediately. She said, taser, 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 and then immediately after said, oh my God. But the prosecution used both the taser and the real gun as props. They showed the jury them. They allowed the jury to touch and feel them. And I think that was the most important evidence because those are two things that you should not confuse. The taser is brightly colored. It weighs much less than a gun. It's on the other side of uh, the position of the body. It's shaped differently. And so it's hard to argue that a reasonable officer who'd been an officer for two decades could make a mistake like that without being reckless. All right. Well, my question to you is like, because of that recklessness, how much prison time is Kim Potter facing? And what do you think her sentence would be? So the maximum sentence on the first count, which is first degree manslaughter, is 15 years. However, under Minnesota law, there's sentencing guidelines uh, that take into account the fact that she has no criminal history. So she's facing a range of about six to eight years. Mm. The prosecution is going to argue for that to be deviated upwards because she both abused a position of authority when she committed this crime as an officer, and she put other people around her in danger, not just Dante Wright's passenger, but the three other officers on the scene and the elderly couple that that car uh, eventually ran into. The defense is going to argue that it be deviated down, not six to eight years. And in fact, they're going to argue that she'd be home on probation and home confinement or serve time in a local jail versus state prison. So I'm curious, police are so rarely prosecuted for on-duty shootings. Do you think this verdict means that things are changing and will more police be held accountable after this? I definitely think this verdict means that things are going to change for police officers in the future. This year, 2021, has seen not only the guilty verdicts of Kim Potter and Derek Chauvin, but also for the killers of Ahmaud Arbery. And so I think this sends a message to officers that they're not only going to be held civilly liable, but criminally liable for their actions moving forward, and not just for uh, the intentional use of lethal force, but here also the unintentional use of lethal force. So, Murray, I want to talk a little bit about training. We talked about how things are going to change for the police in the future. But in my mind, and I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, had they have proper training, this mistake might not have happened. It could have been prevented. Do you think training will change for police in the future? Training could change, but honestly, this was a a mistake of colossal proportions, as the prosecution argued. Kim Potter had training on taser on tasers just the month prior. In March of this year, she had training on tasers. She had done 20 years on the force. So the training, I think, that will change is as opposed to using even non-lethal force, police officers will be trained to use de-escalation measures like crisis tactics and negotiations rather than measures of escalation of tasers and guns instead. 
Wow. Well, Mari Henderson, thank you so much for joining us here in DBL. We really appreciate all your insight thank on you. this case. We'll be right back. Thank you, Mari.